revolution. Look, Marklins, on standby. Log online. Fam page loaded and ready. Player stats loaded. Health check. Go. Weapons check. Ice check. Complete. We have launch for the informant podcast in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to the after New Year's, or it is New Year's, for us recording. (laughs) The hungover. The The hungover episode. It's the informant podcast hungover episode. Actually, not not too hungover. Didn't Uh, drink much at all. I did. I drank enough for you. (laughs) Well, it was your birthday too, right, John? It was. I I, uh, did partake in a little bit of, um, (laughs) yeah, spirits. Yeah, same with me. I figured you would. I figured Pete would too, and I know Mike Nestor did. Oh, well, he does that every day. So. I know. So yeah. <laughs> <I think> they... <laughs> true. He always says it's five o'clock somewhere. Yes, it is too. Unless so it, it was eleven fifty nine somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he celebrated all the New Year's for everyone. So all of our listeners. Did anybody go anywhere? Or most people in, or what did you guys do? I went to a concert. Jen rocked out all night. Yeah. Uh, the, the aging rocker concert. <laughs> <laughs> well, the night before, I had went and saw Bob Seger and then Guns N' Roses last night and that guy from Skid Row. <laughs> and then none of this would be something I would go choose to do by myself as I have friends in town. And I'm like, how do I keep getting stuck in these old rocker concerts? Worse than that, how did you get stuck at Britney Spears? <laughs> no, I liked Britney Spears. I know. Was, See, I, you're so yeah, funny. that was a fun concert, but these ones were kind of extended. Yeah. No, Pop Seeger wasn't bad either. And then not Guns N' Roses wasn't bad either, but the it's like a four-hour show. It's like, yeah, are you going to wear you down? Oh, my God. I could not wait to get out of there. Was that all your you, first time to see them? Yeah. All you could do was drink. No, Guns N' Roses is a fun band to uh, see. I've seen them a lot, for sure. Yeah, maybe when I was 12. Wow. They weren't around <laughs> then. They didn't show up until I'm we were in our late teens. I had to make myself look younger. <laughs> yeah, I think we were like eight. Yeah. Were born yet? We yeah. were fetuses. <laughs> <laughs> Although, for, that's partially true for Bob Seger. At some of the songs, he would be like, this was written in 1967. And I'm like, oh, cool. I wasn't born yet. Yay. I love <laughs> this song. I'm young. <laughs> That's awesome. And then I, it was funny because I posted something on my Facebook. And I get bored at these concerts and get on my phone. And I posted a picture of the Bob Seger concert. And then there were some comments like, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of made me feel old. Well, yeah. Well, like you said, some of his songs were from before you were born. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> now, what did you do? Uh I had a really nice dinner and just, we did family stuff. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Just hung about here and it was really, really windy and cold and I really don't like all the drunk drivers and stuff like that. So we just stayed in this year. There wasn't a lot to do around town. So does anybody like drunk drivers? No, I don't think, well, the police. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, they do. They make a lot. They of love money. them. No, but it scares me because I heard sirens all night long. Yeah, and I don't like living, you know, the city. So it's it's kind of you know makes you think it, all yeah. night long. In Vegas, they have a lot of checkpoints for that on New Year's. I think everywhere does, and I think they have yeah. to. And I'm glad they do. Yeah, because that's kind of scary. But anyway, I just played baccarat until I was sober, and then I went. <laughs> Because I couldn't go home, so it was the perfect excuse to gamble. Exactly, except it's not a good time when you're drinking. No. <laughs> That's why I wouldn't play <laughs> poker drunk. <laughs> well, did anybody play Mafia Wars this weekend? A little bit. A little bit. It was kind of hard to you. There's so much going on. I know. On. I feel bad because I didn't, like, for the first or second time ever, I didn't get my family progression done. Ooh. And then I forgot to accept the 20 shells. Yikes. I know. Uh-oh. I might Fallen. have to. Fallen. <laughs> I might throw you out. I think we're being lenient during the holidays if people can't, can't do it. Because we do monitor that every day to see who's doing it and who's not. Mm-hmm. And there just wasn't time yesterday. 
No, there really wasn't. And I wanted to play more often than I did get to yesterday, but it's been a little overwhelming. So it was better for me to just step away from the computer and enjoy the holidays. Yeah, it is nice to get away from it all. Mm-hmm. And necessary at times. So Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about you, Pete? Um, well, we we just did like family game night and stuff on New Year's Eve. And then today, me and my older boys went to see Sherlock Holmes. Oh, how uh-huh. was that? That was excellent. That's worth well worth the money. Nice. Robert Downey Jr. is awesome. So is the girl with the dragon tattoo. Oh, oh. was it? That was I hadn't good. seen that one. Well, if, if you didn't read the book, I think the American version is um, not as good as the Swedish version because they don't really explain what's going on very well. Kind of like Singa. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't read the book, you might be a little lost. Because they had already done that movie once already, haven't they? In Sweden. I see. And so the movie had subtext if you if you watched it. And then oh. they did the American version, and that just came out. I got you. Okay. Yeah, and Martin said that the Swedish one was actually a good representation of what it's like to live in Sweden. Oh. I asked. Interesting. Nice. I saw the Muppet movie this weekend. <laughs> Ew. My boy, my boy saw that. They said it was hilarious. Yeah, I mean, there was time, it was really campy and like, you know, at times it was just overly cheesy, but then there's always something funny to bring it back. And there was a lot of cool cameos. So it was, it was, my son wanted to see it and it was the best Aww. thing. That was the best thing still playing for a kid. So, am yeah. I a man or a Muppet? <laughs> <laughs> that I'm was a man or a Muppet of a man. <clears throat> I think that was probably my favorite part. That was good. <laughs> and of course, Miss Piggy rocks. So, <laughs> that was kind of funny, though. But yeah, I don't get out much. And then when I do, it's like a movie like that. <laughs> like, yeah, mm-hmm. when you have kids. Yeah, you just don't get to see I don't think I'll ever get roped into seeing that movie. I doubt it, but you never know. (laughs) Well, it sounds like Pete got out of it, too. (laughs) It sounds like it. But he knows the song, so he didn't get too far out of it. How did you go, Pete? No, I I, I actually didn't go, but my boys came home singing it. Uh Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, mine was singing it earlier, too. It's kind of gets stuck in your head a little bit. (laughs) (laughs) So, Pete, has anything changed in Spockholm? Um, no, not really a whole lot. We've been kind of taking a little bit of time sort of off, just keeping things rolling. But, um, I did over the, uh, well, on just after Christmas Eve, I gave out the, um, what we've decided to call the resolutions vote analyzer to the golden toolbar users, which was basically just a small spocklet that Jen talked about on the last show that uh, lets people go in and see where the voting currently is at on the resolutions event that's going on in the game. And, and for people that don't have that, um, where should they check it out? Uh, My fan page. Yeah, okay. I was going to say check check out the fan pages because <laughs> I'm sure there's the still lingering debate over who's going to win. But I mean, no, clearly, at, well, clearly, at, yeah, clearly at this point, uh, Miss Pack is definitely running away with it. So. It's funny how interested the community is in this because I I posted it hourly on when and I should explain or you could probably explain this better Pete. Martin just wrote that script and he didn't like it's just for an event and then eventually it got onto the Spotcom toolbar and I've just seen some comments saying, "Oh, Spotcom's trying to make money and having it pay to play like Singa." And that's not the case. I'm sure if this event was going to be out longer, it would make it to the public page. Well, if yeah, you I mean, want to address that. Well, I, and I can. I mean, the the idea behind the golden toolbar was that first off, you know, it was a thank you to all the people that have donated to us over time and yes it does cost money to do this stuff so i mean it's not i mean i'm not going to go out and say that you know it doesn't um you know we've been just fortunate that we've been able to do it all on our own and you know any any little bit helps now and then so uh, we're not on a mission to go out and rake in bunches of dollars to help continue to do what we're doing so that that said if no one donates to us we'll still continue to do it um but the um the idea behind the golden toolbar was that we could go in and we have a, a very small beta group that tests any of the sparklets that come out first. And Jen's obviously a part of that. And when Martin decided to write this little quick script to go in and count up the number of votes or, you know, expose what Zynga made available, the, the votes that are in the game, then 
you know, she got to see it first. So she mentioned it and some people said, well, where's mine? How come I didn't get it? And I thought if I was a, you know, golden toolbar user, I get to see these things. What we wanted to do then was, well, after it's been through our, our small beta group, which usually doesn't stay there very long, then we immediately release it to the, to the golden toolbar users. And the idea to us is that they're like our second bigger group of beta testers. So then they come to us and basically say, well, yep, you know, it's working fine. We haven't had any problems or whatever else. And then at that point, after they've had it for a little while, then we turn around and release it to the general public. So almost every Spocklet that we'll ever create will probably at some point or another find its way to the entire public. So no, it's not, we're not hoarding Spocklets only for golden toolbar users and so on. Um, you know, the, the golden toolbar has features in it that are, specifically geared to those people that have the golden toolbar so for example there's a backup option and again the backup option requires space on a server and if people donate then they get that feature we've been very fortunate that we've never really had to ever beg for money and you know as a thank you to our our loyal fans and whatever we decided to offer something that was a little different and a little bit more unique than what we'd ever offered in the past. And that was what the golden toolbar was. It started with just a standard toolbar, which the entire public has, and has access to all the spocklets that we make available to the full public, uh, all in one convenient package at no cost to anybody. And then if you decide to go the other step and make any kind of a donation, then you get the golden toolbar, which is just, you know, graphically a golden toolbar and with some ad additional features. So it's a choice. I mean, if you don't want to donate, you still can use every one of our spocklets and that's that, but you may get it later than someone else. That's just the reality of the way the process is working. It's a privilege. Uh, it's and I don't think anyone should complain about it. And enough people for this particular script, enough people have it and it's posted like yeah, they, they posted a million times on my fan page. Yeah. So it's not like you're going to be in the dark before you vote. You can go look. And because the Sha Shadow King is so far behind, it's safe to say you can just keep voting for Miss Pack, and that's going to be the winner. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about a, what, 100,000 vote difference? He's like, a, last time I checked, it was like 129,000. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. 129,000? Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. what is the Miss Pack up to? Uh, no, that's how many votes are between you guys. Oh, this okay. Oh, three hundred thirty-five thousand seven hundred and sixteen. Wow! And the Shadow King had one hundred ninety-one thousand eight thirty-eight. Yeah, I posted on my fan page like a few hours ago. And actually, if you watch the numbers, funny enough, the party astronaut is actually catching ground on the he on the, is on the Shadow King. <laughs> so it would be absolutely hilarious if the Shadow King loses to not only Miss Pack but to the party uh, astronaut. We should have mini campaign for the party astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was funny because um, there was a forum post and it got removed. Oh, no. And, you know, I had never once, and same with Spot Coma, we just said who we are supporting. We did not tell anybody who to vote for. We explained the strategy. If they wanted to put two and two together, they could. But there was a lot of criticism for not going with the Shadow King, that you were screwing the smaller players, blah, blah, blah. So what is the point in going with the Shadow King over any of them? I mean, in the idea just to pick one. Well, in the beginning, the Shadow King was ahead, and mm -hmm. that was because of his position on the voting board. He was the first one, so human nature is just to gravitate towards that one. And, you know, I, I made a blog post, I explained that, but I never, I just said, my votes are going to Miss Pack. I didn't say, you better vote for Miss Pack. Well, and the reality is, just like anything else, life's full of choices, and this is just one more. What yeah. I was actually kind of really amazed about is it really shows in general the influence of the community that still exists exactly that how much they they will band together for a common call, cause without having to boycott and whatever else to say that you know we have we still have some influence in this game you know because like everyone's pointed out slot number one the shadow king should have won this easily hands down because of its its position that the players that are not tied to all the community talk and don't listen to the podcast and don't do, you know, engage in all the forums and everything else, you know, they're probably just going to pick the first one because that's the one that's there. But right. it really goes to show how many players are a part of this game that are active and, you know, are really engaged in, you know, working together. And yeah, 
you know, because a larger group of us decided to go one way versus a smaller group that decided to go another, that's your business, you right. know. And the events really got people talking. I'm seeing communications in places I hadn't seen in a long time. 